Hello friends, in this video I'll discuss the role of using preservative free epinephrine added with BSS bottle to prevent further meiosis in small pupil phago emulsification. Phago can be done comfortably through a 4 or 5 mm pupil by most phaco surgeons without the need for having to use pupil dilating devices to assist them. However, the problem is that with the progression of phaco emulsification, the pupil gets further smaller due to the fragments rubbing against the iris surface making it more difficult for the surgeon and many times we end up with a sub 4 mm pupil size which makes surgery much more challenging and because of this there is a higher rate of complications like iris chaffing, iris prolapse, erexus tear, zonular dialysis and a PC rent especially if you're blindly fishing behind the pupillary edge to break down the nucleus into smaller fragments. Now is there a way to prevent further intraoperative pupillary meiosis during phaco emulsification? Because we can manage a 5mm pupil but smaller than that would be difficult. Now the addition of preservative free epinephrine 0.5cc to the bottle of BSS will ensure a continuous infusion throughout surgery keeping the pupil from growing down drastically. In this dilution it is safe in most cases. However we need to avoid it in those patients who have uncontrolled hypertension and we need to ask the anesthetist to monitor the blood pressure as well as the pulse rate of the patient throughout the surgical procedure. And if there is an increase in the blood pressure or pulse rate, then the BSS bottle can be discontinued and you can use one without epinephrine. This is better than using a one-shot intracameral midriatic solution like phenocaine plus as the infusion in the epinephrine scenario is continuous throughout the surgery. I believe that some surgeons routinely use epinephrine added to the BSS bottle in all cases. However, the use of NSAID drops three times a day for a period of three days prior to surgery will also help to maintain the midriasis and can be used in conjunction with the infusion. All this with the aim of maintaining the pupillary midriasis. So let me show you a couple of cases in which epinephrine added to the BSS bottle helps to maintain the pupillary size. Now let us take the first case. This is a patient who had a pupillary size of around 4.5 millimeters, just a grade 2 nucleosclerotic cataract. Remember that if the cataract is very soft or very hard, then it's better to use pupil dilating devices. The capsular rexis is being performed with the help of a uterator forceps and we try to aim for as large a capsular rexis as it is feasible under the circumstances. You can see that I'm performing a very careful cortical cleavage hydrodissection. Remember that this is of critical importance that the nucleus rotates in order to make it easy for us to manage the case. So let us now take a look at the phaco emulsification in progress. Also note that the size of the pupil is around 4.5. It's what we are starting with. Usually what we notice is as we progress with phaco emulsification, because of the fragments rubbing against the pupillary edge and on the iris surface, the pupil goes down further, makes it more and more difficult for us to handle the nucleus. However, in this case, there is epinephrine added to the BSS bottle and this is being continuously infused in the anterior chamber, which is the reason why you notice that the pupil is maintaining its size even when the direct chop phaco maneuver is continuing in the anterior chamber. I'm using a multiburst mode using a power of about 25% using a vacuum of 300 millimeters of mercury. Using a sharp tip chopper, I'm able to break this great 2 nucleus sclerotic cataract to multiple fragments and then mobilize the fragments and eat it up with the help of vacuum and a little bit of phaco given in short bursts. The pieces are drawn towards the pupillary center in the safe zone and emulsified. And kindly note that the pupil size throughout the procedure is comfortably remaining at 4.5, which means that the surgeon can now comfortably perform the procedure. The entire nucleus management is over and the pupil size hasn't changed much.
during the cortical aspiration again by using the aspiration port or maintaining the aspiration port at the correct plane it was possible to completely evacuate the cortex without having to nudge the pupil backwards in order to enhance visibility. So this completes case 1 and this was done under topical anesthesia and let's move on to the next case. This is a slightly more challenging case. The patient had a 4.5 mm pupil, the patient had narrow angle for which laser PI had been done in both eyes. There was a small area of posterior sinicae around 11 o'clock position. This patient was being taken up not under topical anesthesia but I prefer to give a peribulbar block. I am using intracameral tripen blue in order to stain the anterior capsule. After entering the anterior chamber, the tripen blue is washed off and then I am going to attempt to perform the capsulorexis. Before I do that, I am using a rod in order to break the small bit of posterior sinicae. So the capsulorexis again can be performed with great control either using a forceps or a cystitome but the important thing is to aim to get as large a capsulorexis as it is possible in such cases usually a pupil hugging capsulorexis would be highly indicated. Unlike the previous case this particular case has more challenges in that it has a shallow anterior chamber. The patient is on anti-glaucoma medications and the intraocular pressure is well controlled. The chamber is also very shallow. The cortical cleavage hydrodissection is being performed after which the phaco emulsification is started. Again using the same parameters as I have used in the previous case using a multiburst mode with a phaco power of 25% and vacuum of 300 millimeters of mercury. I am rotating and breaking this nucleus down into smaller bits. As long as we are performing the direct chop or keeping the maneuvers to the central portion of the pupillary area and as long as there is a good cortical cleavage hydrodissection that enables us to rotate the nucleus, the management of this case can go on without a hitch. And as you can see, the case is progressing quite uneventfully. The pupil probably has shut down slightly in this patient in spite of the epinephrine added This is an inflamed iris because of the YAG PI and also the fact that the patient has a narrow angle glaucoma. Because of these reasons, pupil is tending to go down slightly. However, it still remains within the com comfortable realm of more than 3.5 millimeters throughout the surgical procedure. So nucleus management is then completed by remaining as I said in the central safe zone and using the vacuum and short bursts of phaco energy in order to evacuate the nucleus fragments. The little bit of epinucleus sheet is then aspirated while staying above the pupillary margin and now at the end of the procedure you can see that the pupil has not really changed its size. So this is finally the end of the procedure and you see that the whole procedure was completed without any complication and quite easily. Thank you for the epinephrine in the BSS bottle. Thank you for your attention.